Generation Z and Millennials are the poorest generation in America. Now, why is that? Every once in a while on the internet, you see this one meme floating around where it's a bunch of different Spider-Mans and they're all pointing fingers at each other. And one Spider-Man's like, it's you. And the other Spider-Man's like, no, it's you. And so who is it? And this is kind of the situation we have in the economy. We have millennials and Gen Z pointing at the boomers and saying, you did this. You did this to me. You did this to me. How dare you? Meanwhile, you have the boomers pointing down at the millennials and at Gen Z and saying, you're lazy. Stop being so lazy. Why don't you just work harder? Quit being lazy. So what's the truth? We're going to get to the truth in this video. And it all started with Boomer Bill. Boomer Bill was born after World War II. And every day, Boomer Bill would go to school. And he would put on his blue jeans every day before school because Boomer Bill loved blue jeans. He didn't like wearing shorts. He didn't like basketball shorts. He didn't like khakis. He loved blue jeans. And so by the time Boomer Bill turned 18, because of his love for blue jeans, what he did when he turned 18 was he put on his blue jeans, he put on his shirt, he walked into the blue jean factory, he looked at the manager of the factory in the eye, and he gave him a firm handshake and he said, manager, I would like to work here at the blue jean factory. And the manager liked the way that Boomer Bill shook his hand and looked him in the eye and he said, Boomer Bill, you're hired. And shortly after, Boomer Bill got married to Boomer Bailey, and Boomer Bill and Boomer Bailey bought a house, a Boomer house. And here's the thing, Boomer Bailey didn't go to work. She was a stay-at-home mom because Boomer Bill's factory salary was plenty to take care of the house and the mortgage, and Boomer Bill and Boomer Bailey had two kids, Millennial Malcolm and Zoomer Zach. So what happened? was Boomer Bill said, Hey, Millennial Malcolm, you're my eldest son. I would like you to be even more successful than I was. So not only do I want you to work at the Blue Jean Factory, I want you to be the manager of the Blue Jean Factory. Unlike me, Boomer Bill, who works on the assembly line, you, Millennial Malcolm, I want you to be the manager. So for you to be able to be the manager, you need to go ahead and get a college education. And I'll save up for you. And we'll help you get a college education. So what happens is that Millennial Malcolm works his ass off. And he goes and he gets a management education. And he graduates. And by the time Millennial Malcolm applies to jobs, something weird happens. Millennial Malcolm discovers that there are no longer blue jean factories. All the blue jeans are now imported from China, imported from the Philippines, imported from Vietnam. And so there's no more blue jean factories for Millennial Malcolm to apply to. And so he's like, well, shit, now what? So what happens is Millennial Malcolm applies to Starbucks to be a barista because he tried to find other places to work. He found a tech agency. He found an advertising firm. And he looked at the requirements for the job. And what he found is they needed three bachelor degrees, five masters, two PhDs, and 10 years of previous experience. Millennial Malcolm doesn't have that. He just graduated college. And so he goes to work at Starbucks as a barista. And while he's there, he is trying to save up enough money to pay off his student debt. And he's pissed off because he has a crush, a secret crush on Millennial Millie. But the thing about Millennial Millie is she doesn't want to move in with him. What makes him special? He's just a Starbucks barista. And so she's not going to hunker down with good old Millennial Malcolm. And so he, he's pissed off, right? He's pissed off because he can't afford a house. He's pissed off because he has a job that has nothing to do with his management degree that Boomer Bill told him to get. And he's just working at Starbucks. Now, here's the thing. His younger brother, Zoomer Zach, notices this. He's like, oh, shit. 
I don't want to end up like Millennial Malcolm. God damn, hell no. Mm-mm. I see what's going on. Zoomer Zach notices that Millennial Malcolm tried to apply to jobs that he was underqualified for. So what Zoomer Zach does is he's like, okay, all right. I need to go ahead and I need to not only get my bachelor's degree, I need to get my master's. And so Zoomer Zach gets to work and he goes ahead and he uh, applies to colleges and then he gets his bachelor's degree in programming. Then he gets his master's degree and then he goes to work and he gets a programming job. He's doing it. He's doing it. He's not in the same situation as Millennial Malcolm. Or so he thinks. Because as soon as Zoomer Zach gets to work, he's making, you know, some decent money. He's making more money than most of his peers. But for some reason, he's noticing that despite the fact that he's making money, he's not able to keep a lot of it. He's not able to put a lot into savings. Why is that? It's because he got so many degrees and so he has a ton of student debt. Inflation is up. Housing market is a mess. Everything is more expensive. So even though Zoomer Zach is making more money than his older brother, Millennial Malcolm, he's noticing that he's not able to hold on to some of that, to most of that. And he's kind of getting by day by day. And he's frustrated. And so, you know, there's a, a, a little bit of a, a situation going on in this family. Boomer Bill and Boomer Bailey got a divorce and Zoomer Zach grew up with divorced parents. And so Zoomer Zach is like, well, shit, man, it sucked growing up with divorced parents. Now, imagine if I had to deal with that as an adult. And so Zoomer Zach, unlike his brother, Millennial Malcolm is no simp. Millennial Malcolm is out here. He's simping for Millennial Millie. Mm -mm, not the case with Zoomer Zach. Zoomer Zach knows that Zoomer Zoe is a thought. <laughs> She's a thought. And not only that, but she doesn't even like Zoomer Zach because she thinks he's the patriarchy. Well, we don't like the patriarchy. Zoomer Zach, you know, your, your, uh, your plumbing down there is the wrong plumbing. So you're a part of the patriarchy. That's a problem. Not only that, but me, Zoomer Zoe, I don't need no man. I'm a programmer too. Fuck you, Zoomer Zach. <laughs> what do I need you for? And so, Zoomer Zach, he ain't no simp. He doesn't even like Zoomer Zoe, right? He's like, what's the point of this? Like, my parents are divorced. Divorce rates are like super high. They're like 60%. Zoomer Zoe could take all my stuff. Why am I doing this? So, so Zoomer Zach doesn't even really have a lot of incentive. He doesn't really have a lot of motivation to really go out there and, and make a ton more money because he doesn't need a lot to live. And he doesn't even like Zoomer Zoe. And Zoomer Zoe don't really give a fuck about him either. So, you know, what's the point? This is how Zoomer Zach feels. And to top it all off, the reason why Boomer Bill and Boomer Bailey are called Boomers is because there's so many of them. There is a baby boom. Uh, you know, the silent generation had a lot of sex. They had a ton of sex and had a ton of kids. That's why they're called the baby boomers. And so since there's so many of the baby boomers, when you exist in a democracy like we do in America, and the largest age cohort is the boomers, when they vote, their vote matters more. So when the baby boomers were young, you know, when they turned 18 and they started being able to vote, they voted for policies that benefited them. And if it benefits the young, it's the old that kind of has to carry that burden for the younger generation. But now that the baby boomers are older, their voting patterns have remained in their own self-interest. So they're voting for policies that benefit them in their old age. And guess who has to carry that burden? That's right, the younger generation. And since that's the case, you have the situation as well 
where the politicians themselves are boomers. So it's boomers voting in boomers, and the boomers who are the politicians want to get the votes, and who has most of the votes, the boomers, so they propose policies that benefit the boomers, and fuck the young. This is why people don't like baby boomers, right? You know, all the baby boomers, you can go ahead and mold in my comments if you want. And so to wrap up this video, I want to talk about a donkey, okay? We call him Donkey Jack. Here's Donkey Jack right here on the screen. And as you can see, Donkey Jack has a stick that whips him from behind, and he's chasing a carrot. He is motivated to keep going due to carrots and sticks. If you want the economy to be stimulated, you need carrots and you need sticks. The stick is the fear of homelessness and of poverty, right? But we have Malcolm here, millennial Malcolm, who after working at Starbucks for a while, and after COVID hit, what millennial Malcolm ended up doing was he had to stay at home because it's the pandemic. And he started getting benefits and he started getting stimulus checks and, you know, he had some free time to himself. So he spent some more time playing Call of Duty. And once the economy opened back up, he's like, why? What's the fucking point of this? He goes to his shady doctor. He says, hey, yo, shady doctor, my back kind of hurts a little bit. They put him on disability. So now he's getting free money. So there is there is no stick really to drive him simultaneously. There's no carrot either because millennial Millie, he's never getting no millennial Millie. The, the American family is broken to pieces. He's not getting, he's, he's, there's the, listen, okay, listen up. I'm going to say the unspoken right here. Just as gravity is a predominant physical force of the universe, the male sex drive is the predominant force in the human economy why does the economy exist for because men want to hunker down with a woman and have kids it's the biological imperative the biological incentive the, the, everyone knows this no one says it and if you remove the biological incentive which you know and you replace it with pornography you replace it with video games you replace it with weed then what then there's no motivation that's that's a problem. So, in fact, it is true that millennials and Gen Z aren't taking work as seriously as previous generations. But why should they? Why would they? Right. We, we need to get the family back in order and we need these incentives back in place. So whose fault is it? I think it's just, I think it's the silent generation's fault because they birthed the baby boomers and got this whole thing rolling.